Good morning. Uh, my name is Tanaya Bethke, and I'm with South Dakota Game Fish and Parks. Um, I'm our R3 coordinator, and I'm also, also the division staff specialist over our education programs. Um, I've got two other colleagues on the call this morning. We have Ross Scott, who is our division staff specialist over GIS, and he's also our GIS coordinator, um, and Kyle Kasky, who is our GIS program specialist. Um, so with that, we're going to talk a little bit about how we've used ESRI to really engage in the planning part of uh, South Dakota Game Fish and Parks for resource allocation um, and getting into our programming and outreach. Um, so with this first slide, you can take a look at our data. This is this is ancient history data right here. This is the way that we used to try to figure out and douse our way to conclusions about where we were losing hunters and anglers. Um, that's my job as the R3 coordinator is to figure out how we can recruit, retain, and reactivate hunters, anglers, and shooting sports enthusiasts. And the problem is that with a picture like this, how in the world can I figure out where I'm losing people at, at a more rapid rate perhaps than other areas and by license type or gender or ethnic breakout? Um, and so I really was struggling with, with how to direct our state's resources based on trends being pulled from uh, you know, access tables and, and uh, Excel files until one day Kyle Cast walked into my office and blew my mind. Uh, so next slide, please, or next click. So Kyle had gone to an Esri conference and had done a little bit of playing in his free time and just walked in and showed me this dashboard one day. And this is a graphic and spatial representation of all that data that you saw on the previous uh, table. And by license type, by gender, by date, by county, I can see in one image exactly where I am losing hunters and anglers so that I can direct resource allocation from the state to focus on those hotspots. And uh, I don't think Kyle understood exactly uh, how this was going to transform the way that we do business or how sexy I thought this dashboard was when he first walked into this office. I mean, this is an amazing dashboard. I was very excited um, about that. So um, with that, uh, you know, we're really working on the planning aspect of how to do intentional, effective, efficient resource placement uh, to utilize our budget to the greatest ability and have the biggest return on investment for our public. Um, so I'm going to transition over to Kyle, and he's going to dig into what this dashboard can really do for us. jump to the next slide there. Um, so this, like said, was how tonight I put it, we're informing our outreach marketing policy um, with our three efforts is the main focus of this dashboard. Um, just to jump back a little bit, um, previously I had worked with our licensing data uh, to some extent on different project, projects, but not to the um, extent that other staff may have been looking at this data. Um, However, I knew that there were challenges with that data, um, you know, inconsistencies, um, just basically the biggest problem was the size of that data as well. So started out with some initial input from our staff, seeing what they were actually looking for, um, then basically moved forward from there. So initially I had did start out by just staring at that table of hundreds of thousands of records. Um, so as most, you know, GIS professionals, my initial input was to map that data. So However, um, staring at hundreds of dots on a map isn't much better than, you know, looking at hundreds of records of tabular data as well. So um, the next step there was to actually associate that data um, to better reveal a story um, with that map. So initially I started looking for that relationship that we could associate with those license holders. Um, included on this would be zip code in our county. Um, this was where our actual license holders were residing themselves. So. Initially, I came up with this map here, which is our initial density or chloropleth map. Um, and this is the, basically the start of our um, future plans. This actually relayed some information of the story, but did not portray the whole um, thing of what we were trying to accomplish from this. So when we look at this specific map itself, it did reveal some information, you know, highest concentrations of licenses purchases. However, for South Dakota specifically, um, this is some information we knew as this basically told us areas with highest populations were buying more licenses. One thing we did not 
um, expect to receive from this was looking at our non-resident um, states as well. This actually revealed our no to low license purchases of areas, but even cooler was um, these areas of high concentrations of sales coming from areas across the states um, that we didn't even know we had. So we can go to the next slide. So by mapping this data, it did tell us a little bit more about our license holders, but like I said, it didn't tell us a whole lot more, um, just gave us a visual aspect of that um, tabular data. So to dig deeper into that data, first had to determine how we could do that. Um, so one thought we had was coming across was a way to actually filter through that data um, and to have that ability to do that. Um, hopefully this would reveal a different picture. So in no better way to filter our data than to interact with that data is to use a operations dashboard. Uh, with this platform, we were able to actually create that interactive tool um, we were looking for. Here, this actually allowed us to filter our data, access those fields associated with that data, as well as create that method um, to answer questions we either were unable to answer before, um, questions that were able that were time consuming to answer, or even questions we didn't even know we had. So here, um, with all that data, with the filtering capabilities, with the dashboard, we were actually able to compare a yearly, com do our yearly comparison of that license sales, actually showing us areas of potential growth. Um, yet we were even to look at a bigger picture of total sales across the whole United States, um, narrowing that down to a state level, as well as bringing the focus even down to the county level. Hit it one more time. So in addition to that, uh, going down to the county level, uh, we we're actually able to observe overall trends of our data um, based upon the targeted year. Uh, this would include month of sale, our age distribution of those license holders, as well as even a gender breakdown. So this was very useful information to us. It allowed us to answer some of those questions that we didn't, like said, didn't even know we had, um, as well as just giving that visual aspect to staff that may be unfamiliar with actually working with that data. But one of the most powerful things that we we're able to achieve with this was actually, as our main concern these days is looking at our R3 aspects, our retention, our reactivation, as well as our recruitment. So here we were able to incorporate a map um, which actually looked at a reactivation rate, rate of our, those license holders. So that rate actually looks over the last three years of license holders, revealing um, areas where we're getting the highest repeat of sales, but in contrast, showing those areas where we're potentially losing those individuals. So to furthermore allow us to take this information and perform targeted outreach um, within those areas themselves. So with that, I'll pass it on to Ross. Hey, everybody, Ross Scott, uh, South Dakota Game Fish and Parks GIS coordinator. Um, work with Tanaya and, and Kyle extensively on this project. Uh, my role is more of the uh, administrative side of things. Um, you know, with this tool that Kyle created, uh, we've kind of gone over, you know, what the initial goals uh, of the project were, but we have some, some new and unprecedented and unexpected use of this tool that I'm going to go over. Um, given these uh, highly emotional um, and uh, unprecedented times, you know, we're, we're kind of looking at a number of ways to use this tool as a, um, as, as a look into the administrative world of, uh, of license sales and, and, uh, and revenue. Um, most recently with the COVID-19 pandemic, uh, we've used this tool uh, paired with a couple other uh, resources that we have to address rumors uh, regarding uh, resident and non-resident travel uh, into the state um, and incorporated this tool into uh, management rec recommendations at, at the high levels of our organization. So uh, for example, uh, on the screen here is, is uh, our non-resident annual and three-day fishing license sales by week. You can see that uh, this is our, our spring uh, goes up and down based on, uh, you know, the, the current pandemic that we're going through. Um, 
However, paired with uh, this this tool, uh, we can actually you know we can visually look and see uh, where some of our highest uh, concentrations of non-resident fishing license sales are coming from. Uh, so this spring, you know, North Dakota, Minnesota, Iowa, Nebraska, and Wyoming seem to be some of the more uh, densest license sales uh, this spring. However, when you look at the resident uh, information for our license sales, uh, you can see that uh, we did have a spike in uh, resident fishing license sales uh, compared to the average of 2017 uh, through 2019. Um, and if, again, paired with this tool, we can see where the highest density of these uh, recreational licenses are coming from. This is really important because uh, at all levels of our government, um, all across the country, people were faced with the, the question of you know, restricting travel, uh, closing hunt or fishing seasons, uh, and this really was a tool for uh, myself and uh, other, other coordinators, uh, other staff, other commissions to, to really utilize, to take a look and see uh, if we can justify or, or create recommendations for, for management decisions based on our COVID-19 response. And I'll uh, send it back to Sanaya for this one. Uh, so as Ross mentioned, we've had a couple of unforeseen uh, potential ways to use these tools that have greatly expanded the way that we do business. Um, so not only looking at regulations during COVID, but also now looking into the future of how we're planning for our state. So um, another one of our GIS program specialists came back from a conference and told me all about geo enrichment layers. These conferences are going to get us in trouble, Ross, I, I have to tell you that. Uh, so those geo enrichment layers, what we hope to do is to be able to lay over geo enrichment layers on top of those maps on our dashboard and take a look at customer trends uh, to allow us to see where we can do very targeted outreach uh, to, to members that may have specific uh, marketing behaviors. So for example, um, let's say we've got a bunch of consumers who are purchasing a bunch of ammunition in a particular part of the state, but still have to drive three hours to get to the closest shooting range. Wouldn't that be a smart place to put a shooting range close to those folks? Um, or the same for an archery range, the same thing for outreach and education programs. Um, if we have a high rate of lapsed anglers in a particular part of the state, that might be a really great place to target some of our efforts instead of just broadcasting education and outreach, which is not necessarily the most effective use of our resources. So uh, that's one major impact that we're, we're using uh, to strategically plan where we're putting resources in our state. Um, and what that also allows us to do is start looking at what kind of data we would like to collect on diverse populations to make sure that we as an agency are focusing on inclusion and focusing in on populations that may not have access to resources in the same way that other populations do in our state. So this tool, it's, it's been big for us and transformative for how we are planning resource implementation. 